today we're going to do the annual service on our Onan quiet diesel generator. Having a generator and a slide out isn't essential, but it sure does make the job easier. We'll need an oil drain pan, a replacement air filter, replacement oil, a new oil filter, rubber gloves, a spare rag, a socket wrench with a very long extension on it, and an oil filter wrench. And don't forget something to lie on when you crawl under the RV, like this bamboo mat. Let's start by identifying where to find a few things on the generator. Our oil fill and dipstick are here right on top. The oil drain plug is right in the center and requires a 3 8 inch socket on this generator. The oil filter is located behind this gold plate which is opened simply by pinching together the two releases and swinging it down. There's our oil filter, easily accessible right inside. The air filter is located at the very front of the generator underneath this black cover held in place by a wing nut. If you follow the exhaust pipe up into the generator and look way up inside, you'll see an 11 16 bolt. That's our spark arrester and the reason we need the long extension on our socket wrench. The silver box inside the oil filter compartment is our fuel filter. Since we replaced it last year, we won't be showing how to do it today because it isn't due. And even though it is time to service our cooling system, we won't be doing that today either. That project warrants its own video, so check back here within the next few weeks and we'll show you how to do it. Before we drain the oil, we need to warm the engine up. But prior to doing that, I'm going to use the oil filter wrench to slightly loosen the oil filter. That way, if it's really jammed on there, I don't have to fight with it in a hot engine, possibly burning myself. Now that I've got it a little bit loose, I've just hand tightened it back down and we're going to warm the engine up before draining the oil. We can start the generator from the control right on the front. Now let's allow it to warm up for a few minutes until it comes down off fast idle. Since our goal is to warm the generator up, we're going to put a load on it for about five minutes. After the generator warms up, turn off all loads and allow the generator to go back to idle and cool down for about two minutes and then shut it down. Now loosen your oil fill cap. Loosen the oil drain plug and remove it, being careful not to get burned by hot oil. Unlike a car, there's no crush washer to be replaced on this plug. Once the oil's done draining, tighten it back in place, tighten it down, being careful not to tighten too much. The most common mistake people make here is stripping the drain plug. Then just wipe off the excess oil. Since we've pre-loosened our oil filter, now it's a breeze to get it off. Now using a clean part of your rag, carefully clean the seat where the oil filter screws on. Now put a light coating of fresh oil on the gasket of the new filter. And install it, carefully avoiding getting any dirt into it. Spin the filter on until it just touches the block. And tighten it by hand, only another half or three quarters of a turn. No further, and don't use the oil filter wrench to tighten an oil filter on. Use your rag to wipe up any excess oil, but leave the access panel open for now so we can check for leaks. Using a clean funnel, add fresh oil through the oil fill cap. Check your dipstick and add oil as needed. Changing the air filter is a breeze. Just loosen the wing nut on the housing and remove the housing, exposing the air filter. Now loosen the wing nut on the air filter Remove the metal cover and 
remove the air filter. And you can certainly tell which one is the new one. You can see the oval opening where the air filter goes. Make sure when you put the new air filter in, it sits properly over that lip. You'll know when it's properly seated because not only will it sit firmly in place without being held, but you can feel the lip all the way around inside to make sure that the air cleaner is properly in place. Now replace the metal cap, tighten the wing nut back in place, replace the air filter housing, and tighten on the outside wing nut. Let's remove the bolt from the spark arrestor using our 11 16 inch socket on our long extension. When you remove the bolt from the socket, you're going to see all the soot from the spark arrestor. Now, leave the spark arrestor bolt out and fire the generator back up. Once the generator is warmed up a little bit, we need to put it under very high load to blow the soot out of the spark arrestor. So let's turn both our air conditioners on. Once both air conditioners are online, we're going to turn on our electric hot water also. Running the generator at high power for five minutes with the spark arrestor plug removed will clear the soot out of the muffler. As always, before shutting down your generator, turn off all loads and allow it to cool down at idle for two minutes before shutting it down. Now our generator is cooled down so we can shut it off. Be sure to check for leaks around your oil plug and oil filter. Getting the spark arrestor plug back in can be a little tricky because you're going so far up inside the generator in a blind area. A flashlight can help, but you're definitely going to need some braille. And here's another little trick too. The real difficulty is starting the bolt. If you put your spark arrestor bolt inside the socket, it's going to fall down inside and when you put it up into the generator, it's not going to be sticking out of the socket to start. And this is going to happen even if you weren't using deep throat sockets. Here's the trick. Put a small socket down inside the other socket, then put your bolt in. Now when you put your socket straight up in the air, the spark arrestor bolt is positioned to start back into the threads. Let's start by eyeing up where the spark arrestor is. Just like with any other thread, start it by hand first to be sure you don't strip it. And be careful not to burn yourself on the muffler. And tighten it down snugly. Always be sure to dispose of used oil properly. And take a final check of your dipstick to make sure the oil level is correct.